Lauren Wright is here, professor of political science at Princeton University. All right, uh, you have the thesis of the term paper here. Uh, how did I do? I mean, you did well, but I totally disagree with you on this being a good thing for Trump in the primary. I mean, we don't have any evidence of that. What's more likely is he'll keep the support he'll already have and might not win over those moderate voters that were largely responsible for giving him the White House in 2016. And especially if he wins the primary, which he very well may, uh, this will really alienate some people in the middle who think, as you very aptly and very, very, very nicely noted at the beginning, uh, is really extraordinary, outlandish, and dangerous behavior. I think that prevents Trump from getting over the line rather than helping him. Look, and we have to point out, you look at the rule book, otherwise known as the Constitution, he can run from run for totally. president uh, under yeah. under indictment. He can run from president having been convicted. He can run yes. for president from jail. There's there's yeah. if he if that happens. I mean, there's 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 really no there's no change materially to his campaign. You say that he could win the primary. You're leaving open the possibility, right, that if we look at the polling, that this really doesn't have any effect on his report uh, on his support among Republican voters, especially Republican primary voters. On his existing level of support. But when those Mike Pence voters and Nikki Haley voters and Chris Sununu voters and all these people getting less than 5% need somewhere to go later in the primary season, this is the kind of thing that might prevent them mm. from turning out possibly or giving Trump their support. Those types of voters who obviously care about other issues than bumping Trump up and being part of sort of the, the MAGA yeah, that's a good uh, character cult will be turned off by this. That's why they're already not voting it, for him. It's hard to read the indictment as a, as a fair-minded person um, and not be turned off by Donald Trump's behavior as it is laid out in there. Now, obviously, these are allegations. He's innocent until proven guilty. But uh, based on on what's in there and the, the level of detail they have and the recordings they have, it's hard to not go, gee, this this really is is pretty bad behavior, which is what Jack Smith, the special counsel, tried to lay out. And I thought what he said at the very beginning uh, about the the line that he drew was not about breaking the law, but it was what breaking the law did. Uh, take a listen to Jack Smith. Our laws that protect national defense information are critical to the safety and security of the United States, and they must be enforced. Violations of those laws put our country at risk. I read this as him trying to justify, I crossed the Rubicon by indicting a former president because he put the country at risk. Thus, the, the standard now going forward uh, here, here forth is if you're going to indict a former president, they have to have put the country at risk. What I feel as though he didn't have was, and, and maybe this is where the difference in the polling would be, and that's why I want to ask you, putting the country at risk is one thing. That, that is a, something that could have happened. Um, it's at risk. He didn't say what President Trump did damaged the national security of the United States because he doesn't have the ability to prove that. There's no proof that these documents were turned over to a foreign power or damaged the country. And I'm wondering if that perhaps would have been the breaking point. We'll never know. But that if he'd been able to get there, we'd have to say now Republican voters would go, OK, that that's a point. I mean, I think the national security argument is very compelling, and that's why he led with it, the damage to the country. But also, as you noted, the standard of evidence, the quality of evidence seems to be extraordinarily high. And I think that's why we see all of these Republicans, whether it's congressional reps or sort of partisan talking heads or anyone who's a Trump supporter uh, saying, well, what about Hillary Clinton? What about Biden? What about other uh, other pieces of evidence that this could be politically motivated? No one is saying this behavior is OK. No, no yeah. one that I've seen today has said it's acceptable and I would engage in it. 
And uh, that means you have a very weak argument. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.